Good morning. Can y'all hear me all right out there? Yeah. You're not on? Can you hear me now? You can hear me now, can't you? That's a lot better, ain't it? We, we're glad to see each and every one of you this morning. We thank you for joining us for Drive-In Church this morning. I, I know one thing. The Lord has been good to us and has given us beautiful weather through this and given us every Sunday morning has been a beautiful Sunday morning. He's held back the rain. And so you know what? I'm thankful for that. Amen. We might not be able to meet inside, but thank God he's made a way for us to meet uh, these last three Sunday mornings outside here together. And it's so good to get to see your faces and get to at least speak to you and wave at you. Uh, I know things are just different, but you know, I, I preached on Wednesday night that just like Nehemiah when he was building the walls, that when they were, they were under attack, in order to finish the work, they had to adapt to their situation. They had to do things a little bit differently, but the work was finished. In the same way, in this situation, we have to adapt. There's things that we have to do differently, but we can still move forward. Amen? And so I'm so glad that you are here with us this morning. If you want the radio station on in your car, it is 89.5. If, if for some reason you want to turn it on as well to help hear a little bit better, it is 89.5. Uh, but we are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Sunday morning. And uh, I want you to do something as we get started this morning. I want to just uh, take a moment as we get started before I forget. And would y'all just, uh, I want to tell you about how great these people are standing behind me. Our praise team, they get here every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. And they have to bring all of this stuff out. They have to set it up. They're plugging it in, getting it tuned in. And then when we get done, they take it all back inside. They've done that the last three Sunday mornings. Can y'all make a little bit of noise for them this morning? And we say we appreciate them. Amen. Amen. Thank you. We, thank you for that. We appreciate them taking their time. And and, uh, and I, when we get here, today, we we originally were going to do this the first Sunday morning. We were going for Easter. We were going to do a, an Easter sunrise service. So we were going to start it at 8 o'clock for that sunrise service. And I told them, I said, do y'all understand that means we have to be here at 6 o'clock? I said, I think we'll just settle for the 10 o'clock service. Amen. So we're glad that you are here. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer and get started with worship this morning. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come before you today in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Lord, for your mercies and your grace. We thank you for that beautiful sunshine that is shining down upon us, God, reminding us of your goodness, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to gather this morning with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We've come here today to lift up the name of Jesus and to magnify your name. Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit that you'd anoint and touch these musicians, anoint the preaching, pray in everything that's done here today. Lord, let these this words that we're preaching today and singing, let it go out through the airwaves, through Facebook, God, into the homes of those that are not able to be here. God, may their lives be touched as well. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for it all. Have your way in this service this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen and Amen. And also for those that are joining us on Facebook, we are so glad that you are watching and streaming live with us. Make sure that you comment on that Facebook page. We'd love to hear from you. We're glad that you're joining us for service on this beautiful Sunday morning. Let's have some good singing this morning. This first song we're going to sing is called, I Know My God Can Do It. How many of you know he can do it? Amen.
Next song is called Chain Breaker. He's a chain breaker this morning. We've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. We've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lie. If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside, there's a better life. There's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, the same. For the light of day in the dead of night We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight We've all run the things we know it just ain't right our morning offering but as we've been doing the last several weeks as you leave today there'll be a, an usher at the exits on if you either come out this this end or either go out the main entrance there'll be somebody there uh, collecting those tithes and offerings I do want to say this to you thank you for being faithful we've had several people a lot of people that have mailed in their tithes and offerings when they couldn't get here you've been faithful to give these last Sundays and I want to say thank you Thank you from the bottom of our hearts to continue to sow into this ministry that the work of the Lord can continue. Amen. I want to know, want you to know that from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for continuing to be faithful. Amen. This next song that we're going to sing is a brand new song, or it's a new song for us. It may not be for you. You may have heard this song before, but it's a, it's a, it's a song that's titled, Till the Storm Passes By. And I think it's very fitting 
for the time that we're living in right now. So I want you to listen to the words of, of this song, to the verses and the chorus. I believe you'll be blessed by it. It's called Till the Storm Passes By.
storm passes by. Amen. Hallelujah. This last song that we're going to sing together is called Great Are You, Lord. Amen. No matter what we might face, let me remind you that the Lord is great and the Lord is awesome. He is mighty and has power to save. Great are you, Lord.
Amen. Amen. Yeah, come on and put them hands together and give the Lord praise. I hear y'all out there. Amen. It's a blessing when you, I tell you what, it, y'all don't understand. It's hard preaching to a bunch of windshields up here now. Amen. But I'm glad sometimes it's difficult for me to see y'all out there. So I like to hear it when I hear y'all say amen or put them hands together and you clap. So I'm thankful for you making some of that noise out there and worshiping and praising the Lord with us. Truly, he is great today. And we are such, we are so privileged to have the opportunity to come together and to worship him uh, with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm just so thankful today for every one of you being here today. I'm thankful for this praise team uh, being faithful to come out and uh, to, to prepare this every week and to do what they do. I'm grateful for them and all of their hard work. And hopefully in the very near future, we will be back in the house of the Lord. Hopefully in the very near future. Um, somebody asked me, you know, when were we going to go back into church? When would we be going back into the house of God? I know Georgia is opening up a lot of things right now and restaurants and, and, and I know some of y'all got your hair cut this weekend and you got them roots colored, amen, I know that. I saw, I come by some of them shops this week and they was lined up out the door. Y'all was getting them grays out of there. I seen that, amen, praise God for box hair color, amen, ain't y'all glad for that, amen. But uh, so I, I know that's what I know those things is going on. We are going to be we're going to slowly get back into the routine, hopefully uh, very soon. Um, what I'm going to do next week, uh, what we're planning, and I'm, I've been talking with Brother Tyler and different things about what they're doing, just kind of to glean off of what other people are doing. Next week we are going to have parking lot church or drive-in church like we're having today. It will be the same. Um, Next, one thing I will change next week, though, is people had asked me this uh, when we first started. They asked, could they get out of their car? They asked, could they bring lawn chairs and sit here on the front lawn? And that is something we're going to change next week. If you want to get out of your car, if you want to come sit on the front lawn where you can stand up and worship the Lord, and uh, then we're going to invite you to do that. If you're not ready to do that and you want to remain in your car, that is completely fine as well, but next week we will be having drive-in church again at 10 a.m. And then, but we're going to we're going to kind of wean back in to come back into getting into the house of God. You are, will be completely fine. We're not going to be hugging necks or shaking hands or anything like that. But if you'd like to get out where you could stand up here and worship with us, we want to invite you to do that next Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And I'm just going to take it week by week and see how it goes. But that is the plan for next Sunday morning, driving, driving church, 10 o'clock. So plan to join us again. And, of course, we'll be on Facebook Live uh, next Sunday morning and Wednesday night as well. So that's where we are on that. So pray. Um, I know I've seen, and I mentioned this Wednesday night, I've seen a lot of criticism about whether to open up or whether, whether we shouldn't be opening up the the, the uh, government and we shouldn't be opening up Georgia and I've seen some people that's for it, some people that are against it. Let me just remind you uh, this morning to make sure that you are praying for those leaders. Make sure that you're praying for the, the city officials and the county leaders and praying for the state governor and uh, for the president and for that task force of coming back and opening up our country. This is not an easy thing. And, and I'll, just be, I'll just be frank with you, if you've never led or if you've never had been in leadership over a lot of people, or if, I can't imagine uh, leading a church, leading a church to 180 people, but then I know what the pressure that is. I can't imagine being a governor or being the president and the pressure that with every decision that you make, not just a few people, but thousands, even millions of people are affected by the decisions that you make. So I promise you that the decisions that they have got to make, they are not light. They are not easy. And so I truly want to encourage you to pray for our leaders in the coming days. Pray and uh, for protection, to plead the blood of Jesus, amen, that he may keep us and that this virus will be under control. I've got some, I've got a friend right now that, uh, 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 a friend of mine, uh, uh, her, she is in New York City right now. She's a nurse. 
She's been up there for three weeks. She'll be coming home Monday, and I had gone to see uh, her husband, who's a friend of mine, uh, yesterday, and they were. she was talking about New York, and when she first got to New York, uh, in the middle of this thing, she was completely overwhelmed by everything that was going on. There were so many patients in, in New York in the hospital that she was working at. It was just craziness. But now I talked to him yesterday, which she's coming to the end of that three weeks, and everything is coming down. A lot of people are now being are being are getting better. They're leaving the hospital. So, so thank God for that, that things are getting better in, in one of the worst spots uh, in our country. So, And thank you for praying for those that have been on the front lines of helping those that have been fighting this particular virus. But if you've got your Bibles with us today, I want to take you to a passage of Scripture. If the wind don't blow it all away from me this morning, if you've got your Bibles, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 24. Ezekiel chapter 24. We've been preaching from Jeremiah. And then I talked a little bit in Lamentations. I brought a sermon in Lamentations there. And the Lord had just led me. I've been studying personally. I've been studying the book of Ezekiel. And as I was reading through this week, I came to this particular passage. And it just, it kind of, the Holy Spirit just impressed it upon me. So, I want to share this with you, Ezekiel chapter 24, and I'm going to begin in verse 15. And it says, Also the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, behold, I will take away from you the desire of your eyes with one stroke. Yet you shall neither mourn nor weep, nor shall your tears run down, sigh in silence. Only be sorrowful in silence. Make no mourning for the dead. Bind your turban on your head and put on your sandals on your feet and, and do not cover your lips and do not eat man's bread of sorrow. In other words, he's saying, I don't want you to mourn. When your wife passes away, he's saying, I don't want you to mourn. And so in verse 8 sings, it says, I spoke to the people in the morning and at evening my wife died and the next morning I did as I was commanded. He says, I did as I was commanded. Let's stop right there briefly and just pray over the reading of God's word. Heavenly Father, one more time, we bow in your presence. We thank you for the opportunity to be gathered together in the name of Jesus. And now, Father, as I preach this word, may you touch these lips of clay, Holy Ghost, would you just anoint me today? I stand in great need of it. Let me be a vessel that I may be used for your glory and your honor. I pray for the hearts and the minds of this congregation that they may receive your word. Stir up our hearts, O oh God, that we, would, that we might be devoted and committed to you, Lord. Lord, more than ever before in this season of life. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for it all. And amen and amen. I want you to think about this for just a moment. This word comes to Ezekiel and God tells him, I do not want you to mourn for the loss of your wife. If you were to read a few verses prior to this, if you were to read a few verses, the, the, the opening verses of chapter 24, you would see that uh, this is where God is declaring judgment, complete judgment on Jerusalem. If you remember, I've been preaching about Jeremiah. Jeremiah warned the people of Jerusalem that destruction was going to come. And it happened, that destruction didn't just happen one time, but actually that judgment carried over for about 20 years. Because Babylon came in with an initial attack to begin with, then they came in again, and then a third time because the people of Jerusalem would not pay their tribute and their taxes and they would not listen to the Babylonian government, he came in a third time and he utterly destroyed Jerusalem. He destroyed homes, houses, everything he laid to waste. And so if we read in Ezekiel chapter 24, this is what he is warning the people. Ezekiel and Jeremiah were contemporaries. Jeremiah remained in Jerusalem, but Ezekiel, he was taken captive, and he preached to the captives in Babylon. And he is saying this unto the people that are in Babylon. He is saying uh, that there is going to come great destruction in Jerusalem. This last siege is going to utterly destroy this place. 
That's what we read of in those first verses, chapter 24, 1, uh, going down through 14. But then he tells Ezekiel, he says, I don't want you to mourn for your wife. And what he says is, he says, this is going to be a sign. This is going to be a teaching moment. You're going to use this, and you're not going to weep for your wife, and you're going to explain to them just as the people of Jerusalem are going to die, and they're not going to be able to mourn for them, it's going, it's going to be the same way, or for you, you cannot mourn for your wife. It will be the same way for the people of Jerusalem. They will not be able to mourn for those that are going to be killed in this judgment. Now, I don't want to get on to that, but this is what the Lord, I didn't want to give you that background, but this is what the Lord was speaking to my heart when I read that. When the Lord told Ezekiel not to mourn for his wife, only to do it in silence. The Bible says that Ezekiel did exactly as God commanded him to do. Ezekiel did, he says that in verse 18, I did as I was commanded to do. Now I know some of you that are sitting out there today, you've lost loved ones. We've got folks right here at this church this morning that lost loved ones this week. There's some of you that are sitting out there today that you've lost loved ones, you've lost spouses, you've lost children, you've lost parents. And you know the sorrow that that brings. Can you imagine not being able to mourn openly their loss or to cry? You had to completely be silent in that time. It would be a difficult thing to do is what I'm pointing out. But the Bible says that Ezekiel did as the Lord commanded him to do. God has his purposes and reason. I'm not getting into that this morning. But what the Holy Spirit impressed upon my heart was this, is that Ezekiel did as he was commanded to do. That Ezekiel was devoted and he was committed to God. He was committed to doing what God asked of him. No matter how difficult it might have been, no matter how painful it might have been, he had sold out. Ezekiel was all in. I just got to thinking after that, I got thinking about Jeremiah. Been preaching on Jeremiah, but something that I have not mentioned about Jeremiah was this. Jeremiah was a single prophet. Kind of like me. Jeremiah was not married. Jeremiah did not have any children. It was not, though, Jeremiah, it was not because Jeremiah did not want to have a family. It was not because Jeremiah did not want any children. It was actually the reason Jeremiah never married was because the Lord told Jeremiah to not marry. In Jeremiah, the 16th chapter, in verses 1 through 2, the Bible says that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and spoke to him and told him that he was not to take a wife and he was not to have sons or daughters. Now, I can tell you I, that is a hard word to receive from the Lord. I believe that Jeremiah wanted a family. I believe that Jeremiah wanted to be married. Do you want to know why? Because if, if, if he had no inkling to be married, if he had no inkling uh, to have children, then why did God tell him, don't marry? Don't have children. But do you know what? Jeremiah followed through with the command of God, and Jeremiah was never married. Even though that word was difficult, even though that was something that uh, he truly desired, do you know what if he said it to the side and he said, God, I'm all in. If that's what you want to meet, God, then that's what I'll do. Ezekiel was the same way. He said, God, if this is what you want of me, this is what I'll do. I am all in. I want you to say those two words with me together. All in. Say it one more time. All in. That is the sermon today. I got to thinking about some others in the Bible, about how they were all in. I got to thinking, let me find my place in these notes right here. I'm just going to throw that down. Amen. I got to thinking about Abraham. I got to thinking about how Abraham prayed and prayed and prayed for years. I can't imagine. He waited to be 100 years old before he held his promised son, Isaac. And then the word of the Lord came to him. God spoke to Abraham. And God said, Abraham, I want you to take your son. And I want you to take him up on Mount Moriah. And there I want you to build an altar. And I want you to sacrifice your son, 
your promised son, the one you waited on all of these years, I want you to take him there and I want you to lay him down on that altar and I want you to sacrifice. The Bible says that Abraham did not complain. Abraham didn't ask any questions. Abraham didn't dilly-dally. He didn't wait another day. But the Bible says early the next morning he arose. He loaded up the wagon. He loaded up the donkeys. He loaded up the wood. And he left and he went to the mountain. He got to that mountain. He, him and Isaac went up the mountain. He built the altar. He took Isaac and he laid him down on that altar. And he took out his knife and he was ready to slay his son just as God has instructed him to do. Can I tell you something? Abraham was all in. Amen. Abraham was all in. What God said, he said, that's what I'm going to do. He said, I don't understand it. It is difficult. It is breaking my heart. But I am all in. I'm going to trust by faith what God has said. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And the Bible says as God uh, spoke that the, God spoke to Abraham before he killed his son and stopped him. And he said, Look, he said, Abraham, I know that you truly, now you truly fear me. Amen. That you are all in. Abraham was all in. Amen. I got to thinking about Daniel. I got to thinking about Daniel. We were talking about, we've been talking about Babylon. We're talking about how Ezekiel was a captive. He, was, he preached in Babylon. Daniel was the same way. Daniel was a captive taken from Judah and Jerusalem, and he was taken to Babylon, except he was taken to serve King Nebuchadnezzar. He walked down the royal hallways. He walked into the palaces. He, he, was, he served in the king's courts. And the Bible says that he served not just the, the, the Babylonian king, but he later served the Persian king. For a year, for 70 years, Daniel served different kings. And almost at the end of his life, a Persian king, they, they convinced him to make a law that no one in the whole land could pray. They convinced him to make a law that no one in the land could pray except to the king. And if you prayed, you would be killed. When Daniel found out that that law had been signed, when it had been ratified and into law, Daniel went home, went up to the upper room. He opened up his windows as he always did. And I believe he fervently began to pray that day. Do you know what that was a sign of? That Daniel was all in. Amen. It did not matter what the law of the land said. It didn't matter that his head was on the chopping block. Daniel said, God, I'm going to pray. I'm going to lift up my voice to heaven, and no man is going to stop me from lifting up my voice to you. Daniel was all in. In. Say those two words with me again. All in. Come on, say it again. All in. He was all in. Let me say, I got another one right here I want to share with you. Thought about Joseph. Not, not Jesus' earthly father, but Joseph of Genesis. You know, Joseph was sold into slavery. We know the story. He, he went into a pit and then he was sold and he goes to Egypt and he finds a place of, as a servant in Potiphar's house. Potiphar liked Joseph and Potiphar and under in Potiphar's house, Joseph climbed the ladder right quickly. He would he he gone up to, to where Potiphar, this man, had given him control over everything in his house, giving him control over his checkbook and everything he had. Potiphar entrusted it to Joseph. Now, the Bible says something specific about Joseph. The Bible says that Joseph was a good-looking man. The Bible says that, that he was a man of well form. He was good-looking. He must have had some rippled muscles like me. Amen? He had them muscles all just all buffed up, looking good. And the Bible says that Potiphar's wife continued to throw herself at him. Continued to throw him herself at him. It didn't happen just one time, but it was continual, continual. She did this. She would come on to Joseph. Well, one day Potiphar was gone. Everybody in the house was gone. 
except Joseph was in there doing, going about his normal duties and Potiphar's wife was in there. She comes to Joseph at a moment that could have been gone very differently. Nobody was there. Nobody would have known. He could have filled his life with passion and pleasure. And she comes to him and says, Joseph, sleep with me. Lie with me. And she grabs him by the coat. She tries to drag him into the bed. This woman was serious now. But do you know what the Bible says that Joseph said in the middle of this? He said this, Potiphar's given me everything, control over everything except you. Why would I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Do you know what Joseph was all in? He could have just said, well, ain't nobody here. Ain't nobody looking. Ain't nobody going to see this. Nobody's going to know but me and her. I can do whatever I want. Do you know what? That wasn't the thought of Joseph. Joseph said, I am all in, Lord. What you've commanded, what you've said is righteous. What you said is holy. What you have said is just. I'm going to do. And that what you have called is evil. That what you have called is sinful. That which you have called is wicked. I am going to shun. And I'm going to stay away from. Joseph was all in. Daniel was all in. Abraham was all in. Jeremiah was all in. Ezekiel was all in. They had made up their mind. They were going to be committed to God. They made up their mind that they were going to do what God had asked to them, no matter how difficult it might have been, no matter how hard it might have been, no matter the temptation. They said, Lord, we're all in. We're all in. Say that with me one more time. We're all in. We're all in. They were committed. They were devoted to the Lord. I got a simple question to ask you this morning as you are sitting in your car this morning. I hope you ain't texting or talking on the phone to somebody. I got a simple message from God to ask. Are you all in? Amen. Have you made up your mind, Lord, I'm going to serve you? Lord, I'm committed to you above all else, Lord. It might not be easy, God. The way might get rough, but I have made up my mind. I'm going to follow after. Lord, there might be some sacrifices along the way. There might be some heartache along the way. But Lord, I'm committed today. I'm devoted to you. I am all in. Are you all in today? You know what? That's the kind of devotion that God calls for us to have. The kind of devotion of these men that I've been sharing with you. That's the kind of devotion. That's the kind of commitment that the Lord desires from his people today. It's not to be a jelly-back Christian that we just go with the wind and we do whatever we want to do and do whatever feels good. And that we take the easy path in life, but God has called us to stand firmly upon His Word, to live by it, to, uh, to breathe by it, and to die by it if necessary. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 22, the greatest commandment, the first and greatest commandment of all is you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind. That's total commitment, isn't it? That's giving it all. 100%. That's what God is asking of you and I today. Do you know what? Jesus took it this far. Listen to the words of, of Luke chapter 14. He said, if anyone, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters. Yes, in his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Boy, them are some hard words to swallow, aren't they? Jesus speaks there about in order to be his disciple that we are to hate wives and children, mothers and fathers. Well, what does he mean? Does he mean that we're literally to hate them? No. But our devotion to him is to be first and foremost. If it came down to an either-or situation, if it came down to an either-or situation, kind of like Abraham, Am I going to spare my son or am I going to do what God called me to do? 
Jesus is saying, listen, be committed to God. Even in the most difficult thing, do you know what I found? That when you're committed to God, that there's going to be some people along the way that you're going to lose. There's some people along the way that's going to turn you back on you. They're not going to want to listen to you when you sold out and you committed to the Lord. There's some people along the way that just might just walk away from you. But God is saying, choose me even over those. God wants us to be committed. God wants us to be all in. Say that with me again. All in. That's what God is asking. He desires us to be all in. He asks us to be committed to Him above your wife and your husband. We're to be committed to Him above our children or even mothers and fathers. You say, Pastor, that's a radical message. That's fanatical. I read it out of my Bible. This ain't any Creek Bible. This is King James Bible. Amen. You may say, I, I just don't know about all that. Listen to me. Talk about being all in. Being committed to Him. No matter what's going on in life, whether it's good or bad, whether we're rich or poor, whether we got plenty or we don't have enough. You know, I just don't know if I can do that. God, if, can I tell you something? Listen to this. Don't miss this. When you're committed to Him and you've got your mind made up, Lord, I'm going to give you my life. Do you know what? we got a promise in God's Word that God will give us the strength to stand in the most difficult even of times. Under the most difficult of situations when it's hard to stand. When it's hard to take a stand for Christ. When it's hard to stand upon His Word. I want you to know you don't have to stand there alone, but you can stand in His strength. 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 16. It says this. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. I want to read that again. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. In other words, the Lord is looking for folks that are loyal to him that he can show them that he is strong. One translation is saying this. It says this. For those that are loyal to God, those that are dedicated to God, he will strengthen them. He will show that he is strong. In other words, in those difficult times, when you, when you have to choose on your job, well, do I lie and get by, or do I tell the truth and possibly get fired? Woo. Do you know what? When you have to make those difficult decisions, you're not standing there alone. Christ says, I'll give you the strength to do what's right. I'll give you the strength to do what is right. I'll give you the strength to make those hard decisions. I'll be right there with you. If you would just be committed to me, I'll be there. You say, I don't know about all this, Pastor. I don't know. Well, let me tell you this and I'll close. I can stand here today and I can tell you this. I'm talking about being committed to God, sold out, I'm all in. Can I tell you that God is committed to you? When it comes to God and it comes to you, when it comes to Jesus and you, can I tell you He is all in? He's all in. What do you mean, Pastor? I ain't never read. That's good English, ain't it? I ain't never read of another God sending His only begotten Son to die on a cross for sinners like you and me. I said, I ain't never read of another God that would send His only begotten Son to die for somebody as sorry as me and sorry as you. But can I tell you something? The God of the Bible, the one true God, He sent His only begotten Son to die on a rugged cross for your sins and my sins. Do you know what? When Abraham went to sacrifice Isaac, do you know what? God stopped him. God stopped him and says, No, it was just a test. I wanted to see if you were devoted to me. But when Jesus 
came to this earth to die for your sins and my sins. God the Father had to turn his head as they beat his back with a cat of nine tail, as they ripped him open and they filleted him. God had to turn his head as they put that crown of thorns upon his head. The God the Father had to turn his head when they drove those nails in his hands and his feet in his hands and as he died on that rugged cross of, as his son took those last breaths. Let me tell you why. Because he's all in for you today. He's all in. He sacrificed him. everything that he had. He bankrupt in heaven. Because he's committed. He wants to see you saved. He wants to, he, he, he's showing you his love uh, to the depths of, that, of none other. My goodness. God's committed to you. Think about it. Oh, glory. He's all in. He's all in. And the Lord's calling us to, to be committed people. God is calling us to be a committed people today. God was committed to the plan of salvation. He was committed to going to the cross for you and for me. He calls us to be committed to Him today. He's not asking you to do something He's not already done. I said, the Lord is not asking you to do something he's already done. He's completely committed. And he's looking for people that would be committed to him. Jesus gave his life as a sacrifice for our sins. And you know what he calls us in return to be a living sacrifice? Romans chapter 12 says this. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, that you be holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Don't miss those last two words. He says, God is not asking you of, of you too much. Did you hear what I said? To be committed to Him, to be all in, to say, Lord, I'm going to live my life for you because you gave me, gave your life for me. He says, that is our reasonable service. God's not asking too much of you and I. It's not unbearable. It's not impossible. But it's a reasonable service unto the one that gave his life for you and I. He said, I want you all in. All in is what he's calling us to today. Jesus died on that cross. And now he's calling you and I to live for him. So what about it? So what about it today? Can I ask you a question? Are you all in this morning? Are you all in today? Or are you just trying to be a comfortable Christian? Are you just trying to ride the fence and just, I'm just going to do what I, just my best just, just to get to heaven? No, God is saying, I want all of you today. Let's not have a lack to attitude or a complacent attitude about serving the Lord. But let's have a committed attitude. A devoted attitude. A devoted heart and mind. And let us say this morning I'm all in. I'm all in. Will you say that with me? I'm all in. Come on, say it again. I'm all in today. Are you all in this morning? Are you committed to honoring Him above everything else? Are you committed to honoring His commandments and His words? Are you committed this morning to honoring Him even when it's difficult? Are you committed to honoring Him even when it cost you something? I'm telling you today, God's calling us to be all in this morning. I want you to bow your head this morning all over this place in your cars. Close your eyes for just a minute. And listen to me. Y'all don't go, don't go too much. I want you to do this with me today. We, because we can't have an older call, and this is what I feel led to do. I want us to pray together. And I want you right in your car or right there in your home as you are listening to me. Just simply, I'm, let's pray this prayer together. Would you repeat this after me and say, Lord Jesus, 
thank you for your faithfulness to me. I don't deserve your love. But I am so thankful you love me. Please forgive me, Lord, of my lack of commitment. Help me to serve you faithfully and passionately. I commit all that I am and all that I have to you. I'm all in. Come on, say that out loud. I'm all in. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Are you all in today? I hope and pray this morning that you've made up your mind. I'm going to be committed. I'm going to serve him. I'm going to be faithful to his word. I'm going to be faithful to the house of God. I want to be committed. I'm all in. Let's sing this last song together before we leave. Great are you, Lord. We're going to sing it again. You give life. You are love. You bring life. Thank you.